welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. While on one hand, NASA has employed a special satellite to measure the rising levels of carbon dioxide, and on the other, researchers have successfully grown vocal cords in the lab. We'll get you all the details, but let's first take a look at the headlines. NASA's new tool measures rising levels of carbon dioxide. Lab-grown vocal cords, a new hope in speech therapy. Gujarat Solar Park writes a new chapter in tapping solar energy. DBT RC UK to join hands for exciting scientific research. And in our focus segment today, we will explore the causes and effects of recent extreme weather events the country has faced. And now the news in detail. Reckless development practices, pollution and deforestation has resulted in the increase of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide. But how much is the exact level of increase and how to mitigate the effects? Well, the question will now be addressed using the data collected by NASA's special satellite, Carbon Observatory 2, specially employed to detect the rise and changes in carbon dioxide levels. Let us see this report. Experts around the globe unanimously agree that carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas that drives climate change. Currently being experienced around the globe as rising sea levels and extreme weather. Recently, in a shocking announcement, World Meteorological Organization revealed that greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere had reached a record high in 2014. Furthering the research in climate change, NASA has employed new and special tools to track the rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The recent tool employed by NASA is the new experimental orbiting carbon observatory 2, shortly called OCO2, designed specially to measure the carbon dioxide levels across the globe. OCO2 satellite was launched in 2014 and charts about 1 lakh measurements across the globe daily, detecting even slightest variations in carbon dioxide levels. We know that humans are burning fossil fuels and adding carbon dioxide to the system and the atmosphere is the first place that that goes, but the land system and the oceans actually remove a lot of carbon dioxide and they remove about half of the extra that the humans put up. But there's still questions because every year is a little different from the other years. We're not sure whether some forests change their behavior from year to year or whether it's the ocean or both of them that are, that are changing. And so we seek to use these OCO2 measurements to find out about where the carbon dioxide take up is, how it changes from season to season and from year to year. The satellite is specialized in collecting data that will help researchers understand how and where carbon dioxide take up occurs. How increase and decrease of carbon dioxide uptake by trees affects weather and how levels of carbon dioxide varies from season to season across the years. What is more shocking is that the data gathered so far shows continuous and steady increase in the levels of carbon dioxide, touching the 400 parts per million level. These climbing levels are seen to be hitting a new unprecedented record every year since reliable records began in 1984. While carbon dioxide levels averaged 397.7 ppm in 2014, it briefly crossed the 400 ppm threshold in the Northern Hemisphere in early 2014 and again globally in early 2015. With the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris drawing nearer, the data gathered by the OCO2 satellite is expected to aid experts in understanding the extent of climate change and help policymakers make scientifically sound decisions to mitigate the effects. A 
ray of hope dawns for patients worldwide suffering from speech impairment. As in a rare and what can be called a bioengineering marvel, researchers have grown human vocal cords in the laboratory. With researchers confirming that the lab-grown vocal cords function exactly like the original and are safe, a new therapy involving transplantation of these vocal cords may not be far. Speech, one of the unique characteristics that set human beings apart from animals. The biology that governs human speech is distinctive and is composed of two special, flexible bands of muscle called the vocal cords present inside the larynx or voice box. These vocal cords generate different types of sound waves by vibrating against each other about 100 to 200 times a second. Any damage to the cords affects the vibration and may lead to temporary or permanent loss of voice. Now, millions of people across the globe who suffer from voice and speech impairment have a new ray of hope. In what can be called a marvel of bioengineering, a group of researchers from the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health have successfully grown functional vocal cord tissue in the lab. The team led by Professor Nathan Velham has successfully generated vocal cords in the lab from two main cell types that make up the tissue called the connective fibroblasts and epithelial cells derived from human sources. The experiment involved placing the two cell types in a special 3D collagen matrix that mimics body conditions and where the cells grow and assume the complex vocal cord-like structure. This is a setup that we use to study the function of vocal folds inside the larynx but outside of the body. It's really useful to look at function. We take the larynx, it's mounted on a fake windpipe here, just like the windpipe in my body, except this one is plastic, but we deliver humidified and warm air up to the larynx, just like it comes through the windpipe in my body from my lungs. With this kind of system, we can study all manner of features of the way vocal folds vibrate and make sound. And it can be useful to, for understanding normal voice production, what happens in certain disease or pathological conditions, and what happens with certain kinds of treatments that we might try and implement here. The lab-grown vocal cords were tested by implanting them in the voice boxes of five cadaver dogs. According to the researchers, the implanted vocal cords vibrated and generated sound nearly as well as the original tissue. The implants were also tested on mice for immune rejection and have been found to be safe. The research published in Science Translational Medicine holds huge promise of transplantation to cure voice-related disorders and specially create personalized vocal cords to suit children and adults. Asia's largest solar park hub, world's first multi-developer, multi-facility, multi-technology and multi-beneficiary solar park. Adjectives are many to describe Gujarat's solar park. With its extensive projects and resources for tapping solar energy, harnessing solar energy has been taken to a completely new level here, reinforcing that solar power is the future. This is the village of Charanka, located in Gujarat. The village till recently was one of the many other rural areas where night spelt darkness and misery. But thanks to solar power, the villagers now breathe a sigh of relief. With dwindling fossil fuel resources and increasing concern over pollution, renewable energy like solar power seems to be the only way forward. In this context, projects like Gujarat Solar Park have come up as potential solutions. 
Gujarat Solar Park, located near Charanka village in northern Gujarat, has emerged as Asia's largest solar park hub and world's first multi-developer, multi-facility, multi-technology and multi-beneficiary solar park. The solar park, which is now functional, hosts 17 different projects by different developers and has a total of 221 megawatts commissioned till now. We see that in future, because the conventional fuels are depleting at a very uh, high rate, the cost of the fuel price will go up. At the same time, the cost of the power generation from the solar will come down. So, in the very near future, we see that there will be a price parity. The park, which will host 500 megawatts of solar power systems using state-of-the-art thin film and crystalline technology in coming years, aims to scale up its clean energy capacity based on solar power to 8,000 megawatts by 2022. While the solar power produced has met Gujarat's demand, the state also sells the surplus supply to India's national grid, from where it can be distributed to states with power shortages. Located in 2000 hectare plot with an investment of nearly 35 billion rupees, the solar grid has helped in the development of basic infrastructure in local villages along with employment opportunities and have ensured water and forest conservation and reduction of carbon emission and desertification. Cheap and effective, solar power indeed provides a ray of hope when the future seems bleak with energy demands expected to double over next five years and conventional fuels depleting at a very high rate. Steered by the success of the Gujarat Solar Park, India plans to replicate it with similar projects across several other states. In the era of networking and collaboration to achieve tangible results, the same results are applicable to scientific research. Now in a major step towards promoting scientific excellence, DBT and RCUK has joined hands together to work on some of the most intriguing scientific challenges, including climate change and antimicrobial resistance. In a major initiative towards extending scientific cooperation, the Department of Biotechnology India and Research Councils UK will now come together to solve some persisting scientific challenges. DBT and RCUK towards this end recently signed a letter of intent to work together in the areas of climate change and agriculture, antimicrobial resistance and vaccine development. While the new initiative was announced during Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi's visit to the UK recently, the letter of intent was signed by Professor Vijay Raghavan, Secretary DBT, and Professor Jane Elliott, RCUK's International Lead and Chief Executive of the Economic and Social Research Council, at an event on 19th November. The event was organized as a part of a series of events leading up to the 30th Foundation Day celebrations of DBT in February 2016. The celebrations also saw the organization of a networking evening in partnership with RCUK at the British High Commission, where Professor Vijay Raghavan delivered the keynote address. The event also brought together senior representatives from the UK and India such as Professor Sir Mark Walport, the Government Chief Scientific Advisor in the United Kingdom, Dr. R. Chidambaram, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, along with senior researchers and policy makers. The extended collaboration is aimed at exchange of new ideas and promote joint research in key areas like life sciences, biotechnology and interdisciplinary research that addresses global challenges such as food security, energy, health and well-being.
And in Science Monitor, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more science news. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. Extending India's defense resources. India on 24th November successfully test fired the new nuclear capable Dhanush missile. Dhanush, a naval variant of India's indigenously developed Prithvi missile, is a ballistic missile with a strike range of 350 km and capable of carrying conventional as well as nuclear payload of 500 kg hitting both land and sea based targets. The test was carried out from INS Subhadra in the Bay of Bengal off the Odisha coast. Now in a major step towards promoting science education and scientific communication, India's National Council of Science Museums will collaborate with our neighbouring countries to set up infrastructure. Under this project, NCSM will provide the necessary know-how, scientific inputs, equipment and exhibitions to the collaborating partners to strengthen their science communication. The agenda includes setting up a planetarium in Mauritius, strengthening basic science education in Nepal by creating a science centre and upgrading Bangladesh's science museum. In an interesting new study, a team of researchers from Linköping University, Sweden have created world's first electronically augmented plant. The researchers have successfully created wire-like structures inside a rose plant vascular system using special polymers and has demonstrated how simple plant-based transistors can be made. The team has created a leaf display using this technique where leaves can change their color to different shades of green based on the electrical signals. The invention paves way for new technologies based on organic plant-based electronics. NASA's spacecraft measures a shocking increase in levels of carbon dioxide, the effect of this rise on climate is already being felt worldwide, especially in countries like India with pronounced seasons and weather patterns. The seasonal rainfall in many of the Indian states has been historically high this year, resulting in floods, punctuated by extreme summers. So what are the causes and effects of the extreme rainfall that some states have recently witnessed? Well, this will be the topic of our discussion in today's In Focus. Like the rest of the world, India has also witnessed major changes in the weather pattern this year. The year started with prolonged snowfalls that lasted late until March in the northern states of Jammu Kashmir and Himachal. Then the months of May and June were marked by intense heat wave that took away many lives in the states like Andhra Pradesh. And the most recent addition to the list of the unusual weather pattern is the devastatingly intense Northeast Monsoon which has resulted in the recent flood-like situation in the states of Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. The monsoon this year spelled uneven rainfall for the country, while states like Jammu Kashmir, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh was lashed with heavy rainfalls which affected the crops and daily life. Districts like Aurangabad of Western Maharashtra has been under a dry spell with extreme hot weather destroying the crops. These untimely and unusually intense rains have baffled even the climate experts. According to them, this is the first time in 15 years that such an unusual weather pattern has occurred. Data suggests that rainfall in Kerala, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh has been significantly higher than the past monthly average this year. 
the intensity of rainfall is clear from the fact that in Chennai, rainfall during this November has been more than double the historical monthly average. While in Kerala, the total rainfall has exceeded the historical average by more than 100% in the month of November. An increase of 60% has been seen in Karnataka, with similar increases in major districts of Andhra Pradesh. The country has also seen upsurge of epidemics like swine flu and dengue that are widely related to seasonal patterns. Are we finally witnessing the adverse and visible effects of climate change? Experts have every reason to fear so. While evidence shows that such extreme weather events are becoming more frequent and intense, according to the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, frequency and intensity of such unseasonal and extreme weather events will increase further in the coming decades. According to the climate experts, if left unchecked, the changing climate will wreak more havoc in the future, especially in developing countries like India, where the population is more vulnerable. To minimize the effects of adverse climate change, there is an urgent need to implement an effective environment plan. It is also important to invest in techniques like water harvesting that can solve the problem of flood and famines. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today, but we'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.